Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory is this Saturday. It's Impact Wrestling's biggest show of the year. It's their WrestleMania. It's their Starcade. It's their whatever event you want to call it. It's their World Cup, their European Championship, Champions League Final, whatever you want to call it. It's their biggest show of the year. So it's really exciting. Impact Wrestling in 2020. Um, if you've ever seen any video that I've done here on the channel before, you'd know that huge fan of Impact Wrestling in 2020. I think they've done a fantastic job. I think the momentum with the company is at a level where it hasn't been for a really, really long time. I think coming out of Slammiversary back in, when was that, July, just absolutely fantastic. That pay-per-view actually set for the company, set all kind of records in terms of uh, social media interaction. I think it was it was trending in the United States, number one. It was trending worldwide. I think it got up to third worldwide. Obviously, you had all the debuts, the returns at Slammiversary in July, go into Impact Emergence the following month on Impact on Access TV. We've got a new Impact World Champion since then. There's been so much going on for Impact Wrestling, and there's so much momentum and positivity around the company right now, whether it's inside the company or outside the company, whether it's with the fans or whatever you want to call it, there is so much positivity right now when it comes to Impact Wrestling. And a lot of people want to sign with the company. A lot of people want to sign with the company. And I think this momentum is just going to continue to Saturday night for Bound for Glory. So Bound for Glory, obviously, a lot of people are excited for a lot of the matches. We've got the World Championship match between Eric Young and Rich Swan. We've got the tag title Fatal 4-Way match. We've got the Knockouts Championship match. We've got Ken Shamrock in action against uh, Eddie Edwards as well. There's so much big things going on at that pay-per-view. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about any potential surprises, returns, or maybe some day debuts that we could see this Saturday at Bound for Glory for Impact Wrestling. Now don't worry, when it comes to predictions and when it comes to match previews and all of that kind of stuff, we'll be doing that on the channel this week. There will also be a Bound for Glory watch along Saturday night, so be sure to subscribe. We're about five subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner. And we will be doing a watch long on Saturday night. So if you subscribe, click the notification bell, you'll be able to join us when we go live on Saturday. But let's go into some surprises that we could see Saturday nights at Bound for Glory. Now, before I get into them, I must say, you know, these aren't spoilers. I haven't heard anything in the know. These are just things we could see. And by me saying that we could see them, it doesn't mean that that's going to happen. It doesn't mean that they are going to show up. I might be so far off base with this. I might be a million miles away when it comes to some of these potential surprises. That's what they are. They're potential surprises. It's just trying to have a conversation about Bound for Glory, what surprises we could see, and uh, just have a bit of fun. It's always fun to speculate, right? Especially when it comes to pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is nothing but speculation most of the time. So let's have a look at some names that I think possibly could show up at Bound for Glory. So the first name is Aiden English. Now, Aiden English hasn't been doing too much since his release from WWE earlier this year in April. Of course, he was among the names that was released by WWE back in April due to the budget cuts associated with the current pandemic right now. Now, since then, he's been doing a lot of social media stuff. I think he's got a Twitch streaming channel. He's also done a few appearances, uh, specific indie shows where he can. Obviously, a lot of indie shows aren't running right now, but he's been doing a little bit of, promo of appearances here and there uh, at these independent shows. Of course, there's many strings to the bow when it comes to Aiden English as well. He's not just a wrestler. I think a lot of people obviously recognize Aiden English from his time in WWE, obviously Rusev, Rusev Day, all of that sort of stuff. Obviously, a lot of people recognize him from his work as the tag, part of the tag team, the Vaud Villains, former NXT Tag Team Champions too. But it's almost forgotten that at the end of his run there in WWE, he was a commentator. He was a commentator on 205 Live. He also made an appearance on Friday Night SmackDown during the NXT Invasion, during that time where all of the WWE superstars were stranded over in Saudi Arabia. And what happened? Aiden English stepped in for, for commentary for a brief period there on Fox 2. So Aiden English is such a multi-tooled player. He's done quite a few interviews recently stating that he's ready to get back in the ring. He wants to get back in the ring. He's ready for whatever options next. Now, he did mention in these interviews that possibly he would be doing more with these. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the promotion is, but it's a promotion based out of Chicago. So he could be doing more with that. But for all of these debuts or people that I'm speculating about here, I must say, you have to remember what the the match they could be returning in or debuting in. And specifically, when you think of the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match, it's the perfect environment for, for a debut that comes out of nowhere, or a surprise, or a return that comes out of nowhere. So Aiden English is certainly a guy that could show up. 
I think I think it's a possibility. I think it's a possibility. I've made a video about Aiden English and Impact Wrestling before here on the channel, and I've said that as much as I do enjoy Madison Rain's commentary on Impact Wrestling on Access TV, and I have enjoyed her stuff, I do think I would prefer someone like an Aiden English in that role. I just think, no slight to her, but I think her services can be used better elsewhere. I think she can still be a fantastic addition to the Knockouts division. I think she can still work in the Knockouts division. Personally, if it was my way, I'd have Don Callis doing the commentary every week with Josh Matthews. Forget about Aiden English. Don Callis, for me, is one of the best commentators out there right now. That goes back to his time in, in New Japan doing the English commentary over there. I think he's just fantastic. I think he's absolutely brilliant at what he does. And potentially at Bound for Glory on Sunday, on Saturday, rather, Don Callis could be doing commentary there as well. I don't know if that's the case, but he did do the commentary for Slammiversary, so there's a potential that he could step in there. We'll have to wait and see. But as far as Aiden English, I wouldn't rule him out. I wouldn't rule him out. I think that's certainly a possibility. Now, speaking of former WWE superstars, what about Eric Rowan? Now, Eric Rowan, for me, is one of the biggest stars left out of that pool of superstars that was released back in April that hasn't signed anywhere yet. And Eric Rowan hasn't been shying away when it comes to social media. I think immediately after leaving WWE, he filmed a movie. Uh, I don't know specifically what movie that was, but that was the reason why he went silent for a while. Since then, he's done numerous interviews, said that he's ready to get back out there and get back in the ring whenever the time is right. I think he's the same as many other people in the sense that you have to remember, because of the independent scene being so crushed by this pandemic, it's not like before. It's not like 2019 or 2018 or just what would be the usual situation is that when you leave WWE, you would hit the indies. You do lots of indie shots, build up your reputation and and then maybe sign somewhere else. That isn't the case right now because of the because of the pandemic. And Eric Rowan, I'm sure if this was a normal time, he would have made a lot of appearances. That hasn't been the case. I think a lot of people think that he is going to go to AEW. Obviously, there's the Brody Lee connection there. But even he said himself that maybe that's not the right move for him. Obviously, him and Brody Lee, because of their time in the Wyatt family, because of their time as the Bludgeon Brothers, they're always going to be tied together. That doesn't necessarily mean that they should be uh, in other companies. And I think Eric Rowan kind of said that in an interview. He said, you know, Brody Lee's doing his thing in AEW right now. He's doing a fantastic job. By all accounts, the AEW officials and executives are very, very happy with Brody Lee's recent performances and his recent run as TNT champion. Uh, he's the leader of the Dark Order. He's standing on his own. He's on his own two feet. He's not tied together with his past in WWE. He's doing something different. And I think that's really important to Eric Rowan. And I think that's really important to Brody Lee that they don't want to rehash the past. They don't want to do something that they've done before. And I think... If Eric Rowan went to, to AEW, that would be the case. That would be the case of rehashing what they did in WWE. So I don't think uh, we'll see uh, Eric Rowan in AEW for a while. And if we do see him in there, I don't think it'll be, be with Brody Lee. Hence why I think Eric Rowan going over to Impact, I think is a real I think it's a real possibility. And it'd be a massive get. It would be a massive get for, for Impact Wrestling. You have to remember, this is a guy in Eric Rowan that about 12 months ago, just over 12 months ago, he was beating Roman Reigns. He was beating Roman Reigns in singles matches on pay-per-views. So there's 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 pedigree there. There is absolute star power there, and there's there's something there. Eric Rowan's fantastic on the mic. He can work. There's so many strings to his bow. So I th I think Eric Rowan potentially showing up Saturday would be would be a possibility without a shadow of a doubt. Now another former WWE superstar, and unfortunately these are going to be quite a few WWE superstars, is Leo Rush. Leo Rush. Now there was a lot of wonder about what the status was with Leo Rush when it comes to his career. Was he going to retire after leaving WWE? He did that GCW show against Joey Janela where it was, maybe it was his last match. I don't think anyone really felt that it would be. I think people that were taking seriously what he was saying about, oh, this might be my last match. I'm thinking about retiring. I think, look, Leo Rush, he's a pro wrestler. He's a worker. And I think he was working people when it comes to that. That's that's just my feeling with that. And subsequently, in recent recent weeks and recent days, he's proved that because he's done the Cody Rhodes. He did the Cody Rhodes on social media. He released a list of certain people that he wanted to face uh, in this next chapter in his professional wrestling career. He's still super young. I mean, is he, what, like 23, 24, 25 years old? He's very, very young. He's still got a huge career ahead of him. So, uh, absolutely, and and I think Leo Rush, I made a video about him on the channel before, Leo Rush, to me, he's tailor-made. He is tailor-made for the X Division. He's the guy that you can really build the X Division around. The X Division has such a, 
a prestige and such a history about it, whether it's the guys like AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, Kazarian, all of those guys that just really set the bar up so high. Amazing Red is another one. And I think Leah Rush is the guy in 2020 that can really help reestablish that. I think it is on its way in Impact Wrestling in recent in recent months and in recent weeks. But a couple of the names that Leo Rush had on his list were from Impact Wrestling. They were the likes of Chris Bay. I think a Chris Bay versus Leo Rush feud in Impact Wrestling is absolute money. I think it's absolute money. So I think Leo Rush, that is a possibility. Now, will Leo Rush show up in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match? Maybe. Maybe he wins and then he chooses to face the X Division Champion. Or maybe, maybe he gets involved in the X Division Championship match. Who knows? But I think Leo Rush in Impact, I think that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Um, whether he goes in, when he does come in, if he does come in, I think it would be short term. I don't think it would be long. As I mentioned, he's doing the Cody Rhodes. So he wants to face multiple superstars. One of the names on that list was Cody Rhodes. So obviously, Leo Rush wants to be involved in multiple companies. How does that work? That means signing for Impact Wrestling for like maybe three months. And then he moves on to AEW. Then he moves on to maybe the NWA or whatever. So uh, I can see it happening. I can certainly see that one happening. RVD and Katie Forbes. Now, this is an interesting one because they just left. <laughs> they just left. Um, I've seen some people saying maybe they will come back. Maybe the whole departure is a work. You know, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't I don't see the, the benefit when it comes to, to Impact Wrestling uh, maybe getting them back in. The only thing I will say about that is that Fightful reported that there was no real harsh feelings when it comes to RVD's departure from Impact Wrestling. It was very amicable. Both sides were happy with the work they did. They felt that RVD stayed longer than a lot of people thought that he would do when it comes to Impact Wrestling. So maybe they did work something out. Maybe they did work out one final appearance. I don't think so. I think it's unlikely, but never say never when it comes to pro wrestling, right? Uh, what about the aces and eights? Now I laugh because I have done so many videos here on the channel about, oh, they're coming back, especially over the summer because Impact Wrestling teased the aces and eights coming back. Are they going to come back? Uh, you had the D'Lo Brown tease. You had people wearing the vest. You had people teasing it on social media. Wes Briscoe, D'Lo Brown, Doc Gallows, all of those guys were teasing it. And I made a video a couple of, of, I think it was about a month or so ago, saying that it's dead. And I do think it's dead. I don't think the Aces and Eights are coming back. I don't think we're going to see the reformation of the Aces and Eights in the uh, tag team match with Gallows and Anderson. I think they had their chance to do it at Slammiversary. They teased it prior to Slammiversary. It was obviously a red herring to get people talking and to get people watching the pay-per-view. It worked. I don't know how I truly feel about them doing that. I feel a little, almost a little bit used. You feel a bit dirty about it. But... It worked, and uh, I think there's a demand for it. I think there's certainly a demand for it because the reception that I got on the channel every time I did a video about it and saw online about people saying they wanted to see Aces and Eights back, I think there is a demand for it. But unfortunately, I think the moment's passed. I think the time's passed, so I don't think we're going to see an Aces and Eights reveal at Slammiversary at Bound for Glory on Saturday, unfortunately. But we could see, we could see, speaking of Aces and Eights, we could see the president return. Bully Ray still, as far as I'm aware, not under contract with anywhere else. He was released by, well, his contract expired. He wasn't released. His contract expired with Ring of Honor earlier this year. At the time, they weren't handing out new contracts due to the pandemic. I don't know if that subsequently changed. As far as I've heard and as far as I've seen, Bully Ray is still not under contract. I don't think he's finished. I don't think he's finished by a long shot. He still thinks he's got some gas in the tank. He still thinks he can work. Bully Ray is, goes hands in hand with Impact Wrestling. There is so much history there with Bully Ray. He had a, his greatest ever singles run in Impact Wrestling as the president of the Aces and Eights, former two-time TNA World Heavyweight Champion. There is status, there is name, there is so much that Bully Ray can offer the company when it comes to just on screen, but when it also comes to behind the scenes, I think the connections are also there with the likes of Don Callis running, uh, being an executive vice president. He has his links with Bully Ray going back to ECW. Tommy Dreamer is a producer and an agent when it comes back to Impact Wrestling backstage. So the ties are there. The ties are there. I think a deal is there to be made. I think it's just a case of if Bully Ray wants to do it. He's uh, a host of the Sirius XM Busted Open radio show. He does great work on there. He does make the occasional appearance for WWE on their social media channels when it comes to The Bump and when it comes to some certain WWE network shows and stuff like that. So 
I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. I still think it's doable. I do think it's doable that Bully Ray could show up in Impact Wrestling. I would love to see it. I would love to see him come full circle. He ended the WWE circle the right way. Who attacked him in his final night as a member of the Dudley Boys in WWE? That was Gallows and Anderson. There's a story there. There's a story there. That's all I'm saying. I think there's a story there to be told. And even if the Aces and Eights don't come back, maybe at least Bully Ray can come back. I think that would be. I think that would be fun to see. So potentially, who knows? Bully Ray could show up on Saturday too. Uh, what about Mike Bennett? Now I made a video about Mike Bennett. I believe was it last week or the week prior, saying that I still felt like he had unfinished business in Impact Wrestling, former X Division champion. He was only there for a year. People forget that he was only there for one year. And he did so much in that year. And he had a feud against the likes of EC3, um, Eddie uh, Eddie Edwards. Uh, who else did he face? Moose, whilst he was there. He helped introduce Moose to Impact Wrestling. So there are stories there to be told. Now, this is just so typical timing. I did the video about Mike Bennett last week. And then literally that day, they announced that he had signed up for another appearance on Primetime Wrestling in part of the NWA affiliation. So... Who knows? I think at the moment it looks to me like Mike Bennett is is all in when it comes to the NWA right now. I don't know what the status of NWA power. We do know it's coming back. We don't know when. Um, so I think he might be involved in that. An appearance of one-off could happen uh, Saturday. It's bound for glory. It's the biggest show of the year when it comes to Impact. But it looks less and less likely for me right now that Mike Bennett will be returning to Impact Wrestling, which is a shame, but you can't rule it out for the future. And finally, this is an interesting one. What about Matt Cardona? Now, a lot of people are saying, well, whoa, 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 Matt Cardona, isn't he with AEW right now? The answer is no. The answer is he is not under contract with AEW right now. He only signed a short-term deal when it came to AEW, which I think was four, six appearances, something like that. That is done. As of the start of October, he is not with AEW anymore. It was a short-term deal. He wanted a short-term deal. He didn't want to be locked into anything longer. He absolutely could sign a new contract with AEW, and to be honest, I expect that to happen. I think he signed that short-term deal initially just to get a feel of what the company was like. Can I trust them? Uh, how are they going to use me? How do they value me? How do they rate me? But I also think he signed a short-term deal just to assess the options that were out there. And we have Brian Myers in Impact Wrestling. He's all in with when it comes to Impact Wrestling. He's had some good matches and good feuds recently. Why not? Why not? I mean, Matt Cardona, it would certainly make a splash. I think it would make a splash because a lot of people assume he's just going to end up back in AEW. And yes, it was a short term deal, but he's friends with Cody and he's friends with the Rhodes family. It's going to be it's an inevit inevitability that Cardona will end up in AEW. But I think I think it's possible. It certainly is a surprise that I think would catch people off guard. And I won't rule it out. I won't rule it out. And I don't think you should either. I think there's a, there's a potential there. We could see Matt Cardona Saturday Night Bound for Glory. Will it happen? I, it may, it's unlikely, but theoretically it could happen. So who knows? Who knows? And if it does happen, you heard it here first. Uh, but that's all the surprises that I could think of. What other surprises do you think potentially could happen this Saturday Night at Bound for Glory? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy chatting with you guys about Impact Wrestling. Big week for Impact Wrestling. Obviously, we're Bound for Glory on Saturday, so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, Impact Wrestling content this week on the channel. So be sure to subscribe and you won't miss a single thing. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. It really just help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I think we're only five subscribers away. Only five away from that magic 1000 subscriber number. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe, click that notification bell, and you won't miss a single video we upload this week as we head to Bound for Glory on Saturday. As I mentioned, we will be doing a watch along for Bound for Glory on Saturday, so be sure to subscribe and you can join us when we go live on Saturday. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.